Hi everybody, my name is Yvette Pino and I'm an artist living and working here in Madison, Wisconsin. And I'm really excited to bring you a demo today on reduction screen print. Many of you may be familiar with reduction woodcut or lino linoleum block uh, printmaking. And that is a method that gets us a four to five color or maybe multiple color print by slowly each layer reducing more product out of your block. So you'll start out with a block like this and start to carve away all of the areas that are going to remain white or the color of your paper. That's your first layer. And usually you start light to dark in color. And then by the end, you have removed almost every part of your block, uh, which will reveal a print and then you'll print a key image on top of it. The key image will be your final little bit of line work detail to bring all of the colors together. Uh, in this process, of course, that means that once you addition, you're done, right? You don't have anything left to go back to that first layer because you're slowly, slowly removing uh, product from your substrate. In screen print, it's similar, but it feels somewhat more like an additive process because we're going to use a product called Screen Filler. So I have the Screen Filler here. This is Speedball Screen Filler and then drawing fluid. So this is the screen speedball drawing fluid. And you can get these at your uh, craft stores or you can get them online. Now the drawing fluid, there is a recipe that you can make your own with corn syrup and food coloring. Um, because in reality, you just need a substance that is water, water soluble that you're gonna draw your image onto your screen just to hold in place so that when you put the apply the screen filler, uh, this coats over and this deflects it. So it, it sort of won't, this coating won't coat, coat on top of this. Therefore revealing screen filler and your blue image. Once that's dry, and we'll show you the process, you're gonna wash out where you drew with the drawing fluid. So two fairly inexpensive products, and that's what we're gonna to use today. So there is no need for any chemicals, any other chemical processes such as emulsion or a need for an exposure unit. Uh, these are the two products along with the inks that you'll need. So what supplies do we need other than that? We'll need a screen, of course. We're gonna want, uh, uh, you'll start with a blank screen, just regular screen. Mesh count uh, doesn't really matter in this case. Uh, you can use 110 up to 160. We're not trying to keep fine details on this, so the higher mesh count isn't necessary. Uh, 110 works just fine. I believe these are 140. Uh, you'll need a blow dryer because we're gonna register and leave the screen in place and do all of our washout in between layers while it's in place. We won't be taking it to a washout booth. So you'll need your squeegee so you can pull ink through the screen. Ideally you want a squeegee that's the width of, at least the width or a little bit bigger than the image that you're pulling. Masking tape, packing tape, basic screen print supplies. I also keep some Q-tips because we're gonna have paint brushes. I don't need this many, but for the sake of uh, example, paint brushes to draw your image in with the drawing fluid and then as we go through each layer and add screen filler, you'll need uh, your brushes. And these Q-tips come in handy too as a way to uh, pull out some of the areas that maybe you didn't mean to paint in or to use as your paintbrush medium as well. I also have some prepared images that I'm working from. You can also just draw from, uh, do a draw, straight drawing exercise. You don't have to use photographic base. I chose a really simple image uh, which I'll put on the screen here uh, because I liked the color and the stance. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I run the Veteran Print Project and I pair veterans with artists together to exchange a dialogue and then the printmakers make an edition of prints based off the veteran story. So this photograph is from the Roy Zarin collection at the Wisconsin Veterans Museum. It's a Korean War veteran who has beautiful photography within our collection. Um, this uh, is masking tape, so you'll need some masking tape and you'll need uh, packing tape or some sort of tape to put on your screen to help prevent any of the ink from going along the outside. I have my table set up here with hinge clamps 
and it is not a vacuum table it's just a basic table i got at a surplus store hinge clamps are screwed to the end and then i keep rags and paper towels handy so really basic supplies of course you'll need your inks the four color of ink choices that you have as we start pulling our different layers i'll talk a little bit more about the inks that i'm using and modifications i make to the ink uh, but you can see it's really a simple process to get you started uh, and you don't need any extra access to equipment such as exposure units or emulsion based uh, uh, chemicals so in this process we're going to basically do a four color print with a key image on top and we'll start with the yellow layer and that's going to have the most ink onto the page and we're just going to pull out wherever the little white areas are and then we'll do a pink layer you can see we're starting to really pull out some of that uh, areas where we had yellow on the image that's where all the pink and then we'll do a green layer and these are the individual layers so that the results before the key image looks like this and you can get more in depth with details uh, I was experimenting with an image and I will up be applying the key image as well so we just want to make sure that uh, each step of the way we cover with some detail so let's get started and talk about the process what I'm gonna do I already did some prep work here on the screen and I got my screen set up to where my paper is gonna align and then I've got some paper underneath because when we draw on it if you think about it uh, it's going to bleed through. You can draw on the top or the bottom. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I, uh, for today, I just went ahead and drew into the print, but sometimes it's helpful if you, I'll stack this up a little bit so you can see. If you actually set the screen down and then either you can either have your source image down below and work from there on top of it or you can actually take the image but then know that you're probably going to bleed through on the paper so you don't really want the paper sticking to where you're drawing because it will bleed through a little bit as you draw so what i've done is i've got mine set up here on my table and i gave myself a little bit of a bumper with these mat board scraps i put them here and when I say a bumper, it offsets the, the screen from the table so that there's a little bit of bounce to my screen and it's not directly touching my sample image down below. So I've got the sample image, which is my first layer, and it's going to be a, a light yellow layer. Um, and it will look like this, but I have areas blocked out on that image. And for this first layer, all I'm looking at is blocking out the small highlight areas uh, where any white would be or reveal the paper color uh, so that often in your image is going to be your highlights so sometimes this is counterintuitive if, especially if you uh, draw and paint uh, you're going to be trying to figure out your highlights first and you're going to be going light to dark because layers are going to start stacking on top of layers so you can see here on the screen and I'll do a close-up shot of this but you can see the screen filler areas that are I painted in first with screen filler and that was where all the whites are so let me get a close-up image of that and show you and then I'll tell you about how I did the drawing fluid okay so we've looked at the screen filler where the red marks are and that is going to just block out any ink from getting through on any of the prints and so that will leave us a nice white crisp area for highlights along the image and then i'm going to let that dry and use i can use a hair dryer so i keep a small hair dryer in the studio or a heat gun the thing about the heat gun is it gets too hot and if you're using a hair dryer to dry in between each layer just remember don't put it very close to the screen and don't leave it off for long periods of time because this is a nylon based screen the excess heat will melt a hole through it so you want to be very careful you're just applying air to help it dry 
um, if you if you are short on time. Um, most of the time you can just draw it, walk away, do something else, clean up your studio uh, while that dries. But if you are on a time frame, use the hair dryer, but be cautious. Um, anytime you're working with the screen, there's a lot of precautionary measures you need to take not to puncture it, not to burn holes through it. So take good care of your screens. All right, so we've got the screen filler to give us all our highlights, and that's within the actual drawing itself. So that is not the end of the first method, the first layer application of screen filler. Now we want to draw our image. Uh, so for the first layer, that's going to probably have the most saturated layer of color. So we're going to fill out the entire, we're, we're doing the picture of a soldier here. So we're going to be looking at trying to cover, get full coverage of almost this whole entire figure in yellow. And the only thing that's not going to have yellow are where the highlights are. And these, he's holding a bouquet of flowers that are yellows, pinks, and, and um, reds, so, and some whites. So wherever the white flowers are, there's going to be a lot of screen filler applied. And then the highlights along this like wicker handle and along his little jacket. But not a lot of highlights are pulled out, as you'll see uh, in the close-up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the screen drawing fluid. Now this is a little bit more, let me show you the different viscosity of these two. So screen filler is, um, this stuff has a tendency to dry really fast. So you want to maybe not use your actual container when you're applying this. I would pour out a portion size for yourself and then close this back up so that you don't lose, you don't start drying out your container. So I'll pour out a little bit here so you can see the viscosity of this. So you can see, let's see if you can see here just how viscous this is. You can see it, how it actually starts to drip down. It's probably the, the viscosity is loose like real thin thinned out house paint or really loose acrylic paint. Um, so you want to make sure that you, you take care not to like overuse that because it gets really drippy and, and when you're applying little details you want to be just like you would with ink or paint, use the right brush to get the right consistency of line on your, uh, where you're blocking things out. And this will dry on the screen and it'll hold up pretty well. Uh, for a, a small addition. Uh, this is screen filler, I'm sorry, this is drawing fluid, and I won't be able to pour it out because if you look at it, it's more gelatinous. It's, uh, it's like a really thick jelly, uh, and you can water it down a little bit, but um, it's really just used to fill in uh, your drawing to hold place when we put the drawing fluid over it. Uh, and you want to apply it lightly. You don't, you don't need to goop it up on your screen and make the, the layer really thick. But it is a very viscous, jelly-like substance. Um, that's why corn syrup works fairly well, too. Uh, screen filler, just as a note, if you are a screen printer in general, is always good to have in the shop. So if you do expose, if you do have a you know screen that you're doing a photo-based process with, and uh, something blows out or you're starting to lose detail work on lines or in certain areas, you can use the screen filler to help block out and fix maybe broken emulsions. Uh, so it's a helpful tool to have in your studio. Uh, I, I use screen filler uh, sporadically and very rarely simply because I'm not the biggest fan of the cleanup process of screen filler. It is a little bit more laborious cleanup process. All right, so we've got the screen now is prepped with the screen filler to block out my whites. So I'm going to put this down and I'm going to, again, give myself that little buffer area. I've got my drawing fluid and I've got my image down below that is giving me guidance of where I need to apply the drawing fluid. And I will start applying drawing fluid to make that drawing. And you can see we can get very, very painterly. And if you want to like use a little bit more brush strokes and be more lenient with it, 
uh, it's kind of fun to do that, especially if you want to do a, a one color print. You can get really brush stroke gestural drawings uh, and it really works well. Because I wanted to do a multicolor reduction print, I didn't get as gesturally uh, with this layer. Um, and then before we apply the screen filler, we're going to look. This has been drying for a while. You can see it's still a little tacky, but that's just because of the, the product itself. Um, if it's really sticky or you pull up any product, it's not dry yet. Let it dry completely before you get to the uh, screen filler part of this process. Now, when we apply the screen filler, we want to make sure that we're pulling a really thin layer. You don't have to have a very, very thick layer of screen filler for this to work. Um, in fact, I actually would recommend it just keeps it skim because it can really uh, take out, it can really cover up your drawing fluid and mess up the whole process if you're a little too um, liberal with this. So I'm going to pour me just a little bit a screen filler across here that should be just fine and again it's really loose so it's not like ink it's a lot looser and then I'm going to take this is just like the speedball squeegee that comes with the the beginner kits of screen screen printing you can use your regular squeegee you can use an emulsion coater um, this works fine or you can use a piece of mat board um, but you want to try to have one solid pull. So I'm going to hold this up, 45 degree angle, and just pull it across my drawing. And that's it. Um, and like ink, I'm going to take the excess and put it back. Uh, don't let this sit on screen and then put the excess back because this does start to dry. I don't have a lot of excess because I was really good about thinking about what I had to start with. And you can really see now where the blue and the red, that's the difference between the drawing fluid and the screen filler. So we can take our blow dryer and add a little bit of air to this. So I'm gonna put it on low, add some air. help it start drying. It dries pretty quickly. Okay, so we have let it dry for a while. We use the blow dryer. You can see right here it's still really wet. You can see where it's tacky and I can see a little bit coming off my finger. But the way it tells you can always just sort of fill around and where there, as long as it's not tacky, you're fine. When I say tacky, I mean sticky. So I just do a quick, you know, run my hand over it. I'm gonna just apply a little bit more air down there and then we should be good to go. That should be good. It's not in my main drawing area. It's much more in a place where I'm gonna be masking it off with tape anyway, so I'm not worried about this. Uh, the other way you can tell that it's dry is it does change color. It is a little bit lighter. It's darker when darker when wet and lighter when dry. So I think we should be fine here. So all we're going to do now is take our uh, a wet sponge. You can do this in the washout sink too, but I mean, really, this is just as easy. I'm going to take a you know damp sponge. So I've got a bucket of water and a sponge here. And then you're just gonna start wiping away that screen filler. It doesn't take a lot of effort. Warm water helps a little bit, but it's not necessary. So I'm gonna rinse this out a little bit. You need excess water. So you see it starting to really come out. And where I painted the screen filler, you can see it's leaving, it's staying behind. And that's what it's supposed to do. And if you applied it correctly, you shouldn't really struggle with wiping it out. Um, 
The only time you should you'll see struggle is if you really over applied it and it's too thick. Um, so right now it's working just fine. And you don't want to leave any screen filler in because even I mean excuse me drawing fluid. Uh, you don't want to see any of that blue left. And that's because it may appear like it's then it'll function like the screen filler, but it won't. Once you, if you leave any drawing fluid uh, in your screen, when you start pulling ink through, it's water-based ink, and just like water pulls that drawing fluid out, so does the ink. So you can't use drawing filler as your screen filler. They don't. They're not interchangeable. So. I think we're good. You can see here, I'll go a little bit closer. So wherever the red is, is where the, the ink will be blocked out. So wherever you see screen, that's where ink will be applied. Of course, we're going to mask out the outer areas, but I'm talking about in here. If you see uh, the color of your screen, that's where our first layer of yellow ink is going to um, be printed on the paper. So we're gonna let this dry. We can take the blow dryer again and blow dry it. I'm actually gonna let it dry naturally. I'll pause the video and then I'm gonna get prepped up so we can go to the next phase, which is applying our first color. Okay, so the screen filler has now dried on the screen and we've got it in a nice border area that has blocked out the excess around the drawing so that when I pull the ink through it won't go anywhere on the paper other than where the drawing is supposed to be. So we're going to start with our first uh, color and I created a yellow for our first color and it's a yellow, it's got yellow, white, a little bit of transparent base in there and as we start pulling the different layers I will be adding a little transparent base to each color so that it will allow some of the elements of the color that's below to come through and create uh, another color in where they overlay. So there will be some parts that will be just the yellow and then we'll block that out and then when we add the next layer that yellow will be able to still be revealed because we'll block out and then the pink will allow a little bit of yellow to mix with the pink and then there'll be areas where it's just pink revealed so on and so forth. So it'll make more sense as we start pulling the colors through. So the way I register, uh, there are different processes. I have registration uh, rings and clips, uh, which for the sake of time today, I'm just gonna do a basic registration, which is uh, printing on this Mylar acetate, then putting my paper underneath to make sure that it's aligned with the image, and then I'll tape off the corners of the paper so I can put each paper in the register marks uh, for each print. So let's move forward and add some ink. So we're gonna get ink into the screen and flood it first. So add a little ink to the... And again, this is yellow, a little bit of white and transparent base. I don't add a lot of transparent base for the lower uh, level and actually you don't have to at all so that your bottom level layer is the most opaque uh, I always like to add a little transparent base because I like the way that the inks uh, Work with each other. So 45 degree angle. I'm just going to pull the ink through um, And get it flooded Pick up the ink and just carry it over here. So we can see the ink is now in the screen I'm going to put this directly down <clears throat> Excuse me onto my acetate so I always give since I don't have a vacuum table I always give myself a little bit of bumper to give a little bit more spring action um, so my screen doesn't pop, stick to the bottom so push down 45 degree angle lift up and then I'm going to flood it back So the image is now on this piece of acetate. You can wait for it to dry. Uh, to expedite the process, I'll always just use a piece of newsprint. And I want to be careful. I don't want to smear the image. So I'm just putting the piece of newsprint down on top of it, wiping away some of the excess ink. 
because I don't need all of that ink on this acetate. So pull it away, discard that. So I'll lift this up. You can now see it is on this piece of mylar. Well, it is down here. I will get my piece of paper that we'll be using. These are all 13 by 19. This is French paper. It's 100 pound, 60 to 100 pound. It's good for screen printing, especially if you are uh, using multiple colors. And then I want this to be a little bit higher up. So what I'll do is I'll place the paper underneath the mylar, take a look at how it is uh, to get the proper placement, and I'll get some video of that so you can see what it looks like from this angle. Okay, so now my paper is in place. I'm going to carefully pull the mylar piece back so that it doesn't hit my screen that has flooded ink in it, and then I'm going to mark off the corners here of my print and make sure that I get all of my registration. And that can be easily done either with just tape. I can use a couple of these mat boards. That way it gives a nice little bump up. And we just simply tape that down, get you a square edge. And then we'll do it so again I'll get a video so you can see it from this angle as well so now we've got the corner set where we need to register our paper our paper is all set let's go ahead and pull our first color this yellow layer and see how it comes out So it looks good. You can see here. So wherever I put the screen filler, that's where the white of the paper is revealed and everywhere else is yellow. And as we start adding our colors, you'll really start to see the detail of the image pull through. So I'm gonna do a small addition of 10 this round and then we'll go to the next step. I'll keep filming and do some editing, but we're gonna do a small edition of 10. Okay, so every once in a while I like to save discarded prints that either didn't get additioned or we, we continue to use images and stack them to make mono prints. Uh, so this is an example from a print I made for a different edition and it says you must hate on it and there's a story behind you must hate, uh, which I can tell in a little bit, but we're gonna use this image now and I've brought the mylar piece back so that I can position the print where I want it and the flowers are going to fall just on top of the hate. And there's got transparent base in this so we'll be able to see some of the word through the flower. So I have it positioned where I want it. I'm going to carefully pull the mylar across. Set my screen down. Flood my screen. And what you can see now is as we start to build this image, 
the flowers sit right above the hate and we can do the entire addition and then write the words love on top of hate. So we'll play with a couple of these prints that I have. we can multi-purpose. So I have that same thing again, but on the mint paper. So we'll pull this across. That's why I always tell printmakers one of the most important valuable lessons I learned when I was learning how to make prints is not to throw anything away because you never know what kind of monoprint you can get out of discarded prints. got that one sitting right above that hate as well. I also have this paper that's made from combat paper. So this is paper that's made out of a military uniform. So I worked with uh, Drew Cameron and the folks at Combat Paper and David Keefe at Frontline Arts and we broke down, we cut down my uniform, pulped it and made it into paper. If you want to know more about combat paper, you can visit their webpage or Frontline Arts, which is in New Jersey. They work a lot uh, with military uniforms into paper. So I'm going to get this set up on my combat paper here. And the paper I'm using today is actually made from my military uniform. And more, let me pull out and then I'll cut. So handmade paper is a little bit more por porous, it's more absorbing. So uh, I did uh, run a couple runs of ink through just so it wouldn't uh, start bleeding. For registration purposes, we're gonna leave the screen in place and wash out the excess ink using that same sponge that we did to pull out the drawing fluid. And that way, all of our registration are still in place and we'll be able to just go and add more screen filler in for our next layer. So I took a lot of the excess ink off the screen already. So we're really just uh, taking it off with the sponge. We don't want, obviously, the ink to dry in our screen. Now when you're doing this, you don't want to use any cleaning agents like 409 or any of your uh, any chemicals because it'll start to bring, tear apart your screen filler. You don't want that to happen. So really what you're looking for is the most important thing is don't, uh, don't let any ink dry in your screen. Thank you. 
and again, you can take your blow dryer and help the process along. So we washed out the screen and now we want to apply additional screen filler to reduce the amount of ink that will go through to get to our next layer so that we can cover up the areas that we want to be revealed as yellow, which were on the first layer. And now our second layer, we're going to print pink. Uh, and the pink that we're using is a mixture of red, white, and transparent base. Uh, and it comes out to uh, this pink color here. And we are, are going to draw into the screen with screen filler so that we can start blocking out areas that we don't want the ink to pass through. So let's start doing that. We'll grab our screen filler and a paintbrush. So we've got our paintbrush and we've got our screen filler and we can start that process now. We've applied the screen filler and now we have the image that we want to print for our layer two, which will be the pink layer. It's completely dry now. Everything is masked off and it's ready for us to now apply the ink, flood our screen. Now remember, since we didn't move the screen itself, our registration marks and our acetate will all remain the same. So we didn't need to print the pink layer. We don't need to print the pink layer onto the acetate. We'll still have a yellow layer for our proof verification, but we don't need to print another layer. Um, unless we absolutely want to, just to see curi curiously what it would come out to. Um, I'm not overly concerned about this image, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and start just applying the ink uh, to my prints. So we've laid some ink down on the screen. And we're going to pull through and flood the image like we did before. Let's flood it. And then before I go on to my registered prints, I'm going to go ahead and pull one proof just to make sure there's no breakage in my uh, block out here. Meaning there's no holes or I don't need to touch up any places. So we'll pull that pink layer, and it's looking good. So I'll flood my screen. Yeah. So there's no, <clears throat> there's nowhere where I need to fix uh, any of the blockages. So this is what the pink layer looks like. So you can see we're starting to really block out areas, but there's still a sub substantial amount that's being printed as pink. Now. Since we have our registration already in place, we don't have to do anything additional. We just lay our paper down where our registration marks are, pull down, and start pulling some prints. So now that we've applied the pink on top of the yellow, you can start to see where that image is starting to have some progress. And the transparent base will kick in as well. So after it dries, I'll show the result uh, from the dry print so you can start to see where uh, it penetrates through that yellow. Now, if you remember, we had some specialty mono prints that we we're doing. So I went ahead and put the acetate down so we can get the placement and start printing the pink layer onto those. So here's one of the You Must Hate, which we're going to turn into You Must Love.
see it starting to build up, especially on the pink, that color is going to start to pop. We've now applied the screen filler for the third layer of this print, which means we added in more screen filler so that we would reduce the amount of ink that goes through onto the third layer. So what we can see is that we have pretty substantial coverage on our drawing now, and that's going to give us one final good solid run of color and then we'll print a key image which will be a limited line work to detail in and complete the picture. For the, this run I'm going to use a green greenish base and it also has transparent base in it because I really want to try to get some of that pink to come through. Although I had transparent base in the other image in the other colors uh, it didn't really give the transparency that I had hoped for, which was a little bit more detail uh, work to merge together so you see more than just two colors on that area. But this is all uh, experimentation for me at this point. The more you do this and the more you practice, the more you get a sense for how much transparency you need to add to your inks. That's why it's really good to practice these techniques, but it's also good to keep thorough notes so that you know oh, I need to add more transparent base the next time I do this. And I'm doing a very limited run this go round too because this is for demo purposes. So I'm going to add the uh, ink to the screen now. And again, you want to make sure that your screen filler is dry. Uh, I ran, o ran over this with a little bit of a blow dryer. so. Seem pretty good to go for me. Again, you don't want any tackiness. And you want to check the front and the back um, prior to doing this. So we'll pull out our source drawing there. What we did with the screen filler is we used this source drawing uh, to put underneath, but also it has lines where I wanted to remove uh, where we were going to print. So I'm going to flood my screen. Again, we just pull it through, get my excess ink, put it up here. As a reminder, we've already pre-registered this and we didn't move the screen uh, in cleanup processes in between layers. So we should be good to go, uh, putting our paper in alignment to our registration tabs. And you can see my first one where I had spillage here before I uh, mock, uh, blocked it out better. I use this one as my first run. That way if there's any more mistakes, it happens on this already damaged print. Doing the first print like this also helps you Take a look, see if there's more places you need to remove ink out of. Uh, you can see it's really starting to develop some detail work on there. And in all honesty, I think I pulled too much out on this pink area here, and I would have preferred more green being printed on that side of the figure. We can fix that with a key image. So let's go ahead and print our addition. We have now gone through the process of using screen filler as a way to reduce what we are going to push through the screen to make four colors. We use the yellow screen first and in that we used screen filler to block out where the white areas were going to be and then the overall silhouette of the image was then uh, printed in yellow. After that layer we reduced, we kept the screen in place and put screen filler in and took away areas where we wanted the yellow to stay but would not be printed with pink. So then we had the pink image. We did the process all over again, adding more screen filler to reduce more uh, of what we were going to take out of this image to where we got a green image. And we're all doing this all on the same layer 
and the end result is this graphic compilation of the three colors. And you can see in here, uh, wherever the white was, was on that first layer we put the screen filler, and that, that was the yellow. And then we started to remove some of the yellow and uh, by putting screen filler. Wherever we put screen filler on the second layer, the yellow is revealed and the pink did not print over it. Then in the third layer, we painted wherever the pink is revealed, the green would not show through. So now we've got the green. In the normal process, we'd go through, we can be satisfied with this and this nice graphic painterly flowery look to this image. We could call this done and add words to it or add more to this print. Uh, or we could just sign it and say, this is a fun, whimsical, painterly type of print. We could also spend a little bit of time and dedicate uh, a new screen to creating what's called a key image, which is an outline, um, a little bit, you don't want a black outline unless you're looking at like a cartoon version, um, but it adds the details to put on top of this to bring all of these colors together. That takes some time to develop. So what I will do was go into my Photoshop and create a nice uh, key image that would get us some crisp details that would blend all of this together. I could also go in with my screen uh, drawing fluid and draw a new image. Because of the detail I wanna get to capture on his face, I wanna dedicate some good time uh, and that I won't be able to cover in this video. But if you want to learn more about creating the key image, we can produce a video for you to watch at a later time. For the sake of today, I really just wanted you to see how the process works by using the screen filler to add into your image to reduce the color out so that each layer has the another color but reveals the other color that is beneath it. And again, like I said, if you play with transparent bases, you can even start to see a buildup of where the transparent base will allow some of that other ink to come through and you start to see this sort of textural feel. This, along with some of the other techniques I teach, is very experimental in that it leaves you room to play around with your color theory, play around with your transparency additive to see other colors pop through. Um, and it really helps you if you wanna break down and do a mock-up maybe for a relief reduction, you can start to see how the colors work together before you carve your block. This is a really great uh, experiment if you have time and access to a studio to start developing these layers before you actually carve away on a block, which is a very laborious process. This is a little bit easier. You're painting brush strokes with screen filler. Clean up for this. Um, one of the reasons I don't do this process very often myself is because I'm not a fan of the cleanup of this, but I do know you want to follow the instructions for the speedball. I believe they have a screen filler remover. Uh, that is a chemical that you can purchase to actually help in the process of doing this. If you don't have access to purchasing that, uh, the way I was taught in our studio was to apply a good uh, uh, 409 or Windex uh, and spray it, coat it, layer it with paper towels and leave it soaking with those moist paper towels with the 409 or the Windex, not together, either 409 or Windex, and let it sit for a while, let it really penetrate that, that screen filler, and then with a nice green pad, scrub away. That takes a little bit more elbow grease and it takes two or three times to actually remove the screen filler from your screen. So follow the best practices that Speedball uses with your screen filler removal and uh, you'll be able to wash that screen filler out in your washout booth. Uh, and again, all the safety practices are on the speedball.com website. Uh, for today, I just wanted to introduce you to thinking about how you can make this reductive process in screen printing to get a very painterly feel. If you wanna see an artist whose practice is doing this extraordinarily, please visit Tiana Bui's website. I'll put the link up on the screen, but Tiana Bui is a Milwaukee-based artist who is doing phenomenal large-scale prints using this exact technique. And she's mastered this uh, and has been doing this technique for years and years and years. So if you wanna see a really painterly, uh, wonderful way in which this technique is used, visit Tiana Bui's website. 
Uh, so a little shout out to Tiana. I really am a fan of her work, and she is a really great person that I've worked with uh, in projects and exhibitions in the past. Thank you for sitting with me during this demo and seeing the results of our work. Um, continue to experiment. Don't be discouraged if the final result isn't exactly what you were looking for. For me, this was demo purposes. So I see a lot of things that I would do with this work, but I think this is a really good starting point uh, to figure out how to start building up layers and work with colors. Start thinking about even just using silhouettes on discarded prints. There's a lot you can do with this practice and it's really forgiving. So just feel free to experiment and go make art and get to printing. Thanks a lot. I'm Yvette Pino. You can see my personal work at yvettempino.com or you can also visit me at veteranprintproject.com and I'll put those links up on the screen as well. My name's Yvette Pino. I'm here in Madison, Wisconsin. Thank you and see you next time.